Your Excellency, I'm very happy to welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of Convoco. A very warm welcome to all of you. Let me reflect today on the need for inaction in our world. Inaction is deliberate action only if there are other options to take action. This year we are, therefore, not discussing unintended inaction, but intentional not doing. Let me explain by focusing on our understanding of complexity on the one hand and by looking at myths and superstition on the other. Complexity or multi-layeredness allows the individual to separate, to detach or distance himself. Ideologies, myths and superstition do not offer this possibility. The latter entangle the individual. Detaching oneself through differentiation or abstraction becomes impossible. Ladies and gentlemen, complexity can be broken down. Unlike myths and superstition, you are either superstitious or not. Since we are facing a complex world, it is essential that we have the possibility to detach ourselves. The best way of establishing distance is in action, in action as a strategy. The practice of inaction today, more than ever, has become a manifestation of freedom. Freedom always allows detachment, detachment by the conscious and intentional decision to refrain from acting. We only have to make use of this freedom by refraining from doing what we consider not to be right. We protect our dignity by not submitting to what we deem wrong. Only he who appreciates has a dignity, says the thinker Bazan Brock. We must learn to appreciate not only the flower, but also what we have recognized to be right. This gives us dignity. Indeed, this is relevant for all fields of life. Take, for example, the area of technological advancement, which I find fascinating. Good technological innovation, says Jaron Lanier, this year's winner of the Peace Prize of the German book trade, must improve the performance as well as the dignity of the provider. We should also act effectively. Yet, how do we achieve effectiveness today? By refraining from overstepping our freedom of action, which is a major challenge for all of us. We should always consider that reduction can lead to more depth and substance. And by developing economies of restraint, in which doing by inaction is rewarded. This is important because the art of restraint offers potential. It can, for example, disavow power. Bartleby, the scribe, Herman Melvin's famous character, undermines, for example, the authority and poise of his boss in one simple statement, I'd rather not. This is exactly the pivotal point. Also, when we look at the concentration of power that lies with some companies with a simple I'd rather not, we can abolish or change power structures. Because there is power where you agree, consensus triggers power. Recently, I read an interview in the Financial Times with the Brazilian philosopher Roberto Unga. Let me quote a sentence, he said, since it captures what Convoco has been about for me in the past 10 years. The essential thing, the ultimate goal of politics and thought, 
is a bigger life for the individual, a bigger life that remains the main objective to increase our divine attributes to have more life. We should understand that by acting through not doing, we gain more freedom. Now, I wonder, why is it so difficult to act through not doing? Why is it so much easier to just do instead of waiting and cultivating inaction? Why do we tend to lose sight of long-term goals? Why do we ignore a fundamental insight, long fuse, Big Bang? Here, I would like to introduce tonight's topic, caught between action and inaction. Here, I am reminded of Shakespeare, who mentions the dilemma in Hamlet. And Hamlet says, To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it's nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the, a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. I'm honored to welcome Ray Dolan tonight. He's professor at University College London, but he's also a fellow of the Royal Society and an external member of the Max Planck Society, as well as an Einstein Fellow currently. He's one of, one of the pioneers of modern neurobehavioral research, a field that he has revolutionized. He has been able to localize our emotional memories in the brain. Recently, Ray Dolan has embarked on another complex field, the question of how people actually make decisions. He has shown that rationality is no way as rational as it is supposed to be. The decision-making process is strongly influenced by emotions. No one unitary decision-making system tells us what the rational, optimal thing to do is. It seems that we have multiple decision-making systems. Some of these reflect mechanisms that emerged in the course of evolution. They probably allowed us to adapt to our changing environment. Tonight, Professor Dolan will explain how difficult not doing is, and how much we are all caught between inaction and action. A very warm welcome to you, Professor Dolan. Thank you.